Hi everyone, Strong Out BJD here with Valkyrie. It's time for another BJDs for Newbies video, and today we'll be covering the basics of doll wigs. And by that, I mean that I'll be going over what sizes doll wigs come in, how to figure out what size of wig your doll should be wearing, as well as going over some of the types of fibers doll wigs are made with. To start off, chances are that you've likely browsed around a couple of doll shops online and have stumbled upon these number combos wondering what the heck they're supposed to mean. Well, thankfully the answer is simple and to the point. These numbers represent general wig circumferences in inches. So that means that when you see, say, a wig that's size 7-8, it should fit on a head that is between 7 to 8 inches around. In the BJD hobby, most common wig sizes you'll see are 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, and 9 to 10. There are, of course, smaller and larger wig sizes. These are just the ones most people collecting BGDs in particular are most likely to need for their dolls. Now, to figure out what size of wig your doll needs, all you'll need is a measuring tape and access to Google to convert from metric to imperial if you need to, and of course, your doll's head. Then you just take the measuring tape and wrap it around your doll's head to get its circumference. Don't worry too much about getting an absolute exact measurement. Most companies also list head circumferences on their websites, so you can even skip the measuring tape altogether. All you'll need to do is just convert their measurements to inches if they haven't done that already. In the case of Valkyrie, her head is about 18 centimeters around, or just a little over 7 inches. This means that she can wear either a small 7 to 8 wig or a larger, or at least stretchy, 6 to 7 wig. For dolls with heads that fall in between sizes like this, it's usually a good idea to ask around about specific wigs you want to buy, since not every wig maker sticks to a uniform size. <music> Lastly, I'd like to quickly go over the different types of wigs that you're likely to come across on the market at this point. First, we have the Newbie's Bread and Butter, the faux fur wig. The reason why these are so insanely popular among newbies they're cheap, come in a wide variety of colors, can easily be custom dyed, and since they're just a type of fabric, they're quick and easy to make yourself. All you need is a pattern and basic sewing skills. One downside to these wigs though is that faux fur just isn't offered in that long of lengths. They're really mostly best for short hairstyles. Next we have synthetic hair wigs. With these wigs, they are usually wefted hair sewn onto a wig cap, similar to wigs for people. Most synthetic wigs will usually have a fairly stiff hair fiber that just doesn't take restyling very well outside of what is initially done to them by the wig maker. On the upside, this means they usually keep their shape very well and aren't quite as prone to getting a lot of flyaway hairs from normal use. There are also synthetic wigs that use much finer hair fibers that have a much nicer drape and doll scale and are easier to work with when you want to style them into updos and whatnot. On the downside, if you don't take care of them, they can get damaged pretty easily. Then we have animal fur wigs, or commonly known as mohair wigs. All sorts of animal fur can be used, though I believe sheep fur is the most popular choice. Like with faux fur, fur wigs can handle dyeing very well, so you can have them custom dyed to just about any color that you want. Also, since the fur strands are so fine, these wigs can be pretty easily styled however you want, and not look too odd in doll scale. This particular wig is still attached to the pelt, so, like the faux fur wigs, this one was simply cut up and then sewn into a wig cap shape. Then there's wigs like this made with wefted hair sewn onto a wig cap, similar to synthetic hair wigs. And another popular way of putting fur wigs together is creating a hard wig cap and gluing the fiber onto it. There's also plant fiber wigs. Currently, soy seems to be the most popular choice among wig makers. I have yet to purchase and handle one of these types of wigs, but they look pretty similar to animal fur wigs from what I've seen in pictures. I've also seen a couple of yarn wigs, but they're not quite as common as the other types. And that's all I got to say about wigs for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you have any feedback or questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Valkyrie and I will see you in the next video. Then there's wigs made with wefted hair sewn onto a wed cap. A wed cap.